Yo, the CrossFit Open starts tomorrow as I'm making this video. Cool that it's happening. Dave Castro's workouts are going to be used, we think. It's something that you can look forward to every single year to happen. A lot of things, a lot of feelings and emotions go into that. I'm going to give you a little bit of the good and the bad of those emotions, and I'm going to draw upon those from my experience as the gym owner, as the athlete himself who participates at a high level. <laughs> I can pick up upon the feelings and emotions of everyone I've drawn from over the course of the past decade or so doing this stuff. So we're going to start with number one, that being that it is the best test of fitness out there. Let's say I'm a male. There's 300,000 males who compete in the open, about, sometimes, depends on the year. And then there are 300,000 females. So within that crowd of people, year after year, you get a, at the end of the open, a spot in which you finished. If in 2015, you finish 100,000, and in 2016, you finish in 50,000th out of that 300,000, you know that you did better. There's nothing else in the world in as big of a spectrum with as many modalities to test it where you are in relation to fitness. Now, people are going to come out of the woodworks and say, uh, kipping pull-ups and uh, burpee box jump over so stupid. It's like, well, go screw yourself. If you want to actually see what this stuff is about, just do it. And if you're not good at it and you're going to say, oh, that's stupid, then shut up and go do your stupid I don't know, half squats and tell yourself that you're in great shape. I don't know. But if you want to get into good shape, you throw yourself into the ring, you figure out the movements, and once once the acquisition of these movements is part of the process. So if in 2015 you finish 100,000th, and one year later you figured out all the movements, that's part of being a fit person. It's just having the coordination and ability to do the things that the CrossFitters do. It is the best expression of fitness, and I would say it's even more so than the CrossFit games. That's that there's 40 people at the game. Those 40 people do the open. And when those 40 people do the open, there's also 300,000 other people that they have to beat and can mess up their score. So when that person wins the open, it's arguably more impressive. One of the worst things about the open, number two, is going to be the anxiety that it causes people. It's coming up. You don't know if you're fit enough. You don't know if you've done enough. You don't know if you've slept enough. You don't know if you will be able to lift whatever weight is going to be coming out. You don't know what weights are going to come out. And with the unknown and the fact that it's putting yourself out there, of course, is going to draw upon a little bit of anxiety. And almost every single point from the negative stems from the human nature of anxiety and not knowing. And you'll see that with the next couple points to come, this is just the biggest one and it underlays the rest of them. Okay, the workout's going to come out. What's it going to be? Oh, my God. It's out. Oh, my God. Am I going to be okay? And this is just something that everybody goes through. It's a performance enhancer, in my opinion. So when you're anxious about something, it means that you care. And if you care, it means that you're going to put out your best effort. Try to make everything as positive as you can. Coming from the dude who talks shit about everything. Number two good thing is it's something to look forward to. Christmas, Thanksgiving, those are things that happen every year and there's a month and it's like, oh my God, it's December. And maybe for some people it's even November and it's getting close to Christmas and people play Christmas music. And that has happened with the open to an extent from what I have seen with a lot of people. You get the email from CrossFit and they say, hey, make sure you're ready for the open. It's 120 days away. And people like mark their calendars, 120 days away. And then you start to ramp up your exercise to make sure that you're ready for the open. And you get your sleep dialed in. You start drinking more water. You dial in your nutrition. Something where you look forward to it. You want to do well. It's exciting. It brings a lot of people together, just like those holidays that I mentioned. So you're hanging out with your family on Christmas. That's cool. You love your family. The gym people are are almost closer than family. You see the gym people every single day. So when you have a Friday Night Lights or something, it's cool to be doing that with the people that you spend the most time with. At the end of the Open, it's cool to have that like let go party where you go and hang out and maybe drink. I don't know. It's not my thing. I don't like to push it. Don't like to advocate it. But some people do it and it's just like a let go expression of, oh, hey, the Open is over. It was cool. We look forward to all this. Now we're going to get back into gear. Number two bad thing is going to be repeatability of the workouts. Open comes out on Thursday, it closes on Monday. When that happens, it means you've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then all, most of Monday to redo the workout if you want. I speak a little selfishly of this because when I was at the helm of the gym... <laughs> 
gym. I was the one who was there all day and people would just be blowing up my phone with, hey, can I come in and redo this workout? Can I redo this workout? Can I redo this workout? And if they were not on the cusp of games season, so regionals or a semifinal, I had a really hard time with it. And the reason I had a hard time with it was I think that the whole world in general should have one go at it. I'm hypocritical of this because I would repeat it. I would repeat it. I would repeat it. But that's because I was on the cusp of regionals, semifinals. People would see that. It's hard to say, do as I say, not as I do. But when it came to people doing a workout, such as a seven minute AMRAP or burpees, and let's say they got a hundred, I would have to, you know, show up, make sure that I was there for them. I would have to make sure they would warm up for their seven minutes of burpees. They would do their seven minutes of burpees. And let's say they got a hundred reps. And if they got 99 on their repeat, it was the end of the world. I told you everything stemmed from the anxiety. And it was just like, oh my God, I'm so bad. Why did I waste all that time? And then I'm sitting there like, I really wish you would have at least gotten 101 because, you know, I came here, I was trying to cheer you on, I tried to warm you up, and now I feel like I'm a failure because you didn't get one more burpee, and, like, why does it really matter if you didn't get one more burpee? It doesn't matter! You shouldn't have redone the workout. I became very hard-pressed to say, you're not redoing the workout. If you want to redo the workout, you got to pull someone else in here because I don't want to put myself through that gambit of emotions. And there was no world in which you go 100% on your first go at it with a good plan, get your 100 burpees, and then make a significant amount jump where you're going to get 110 burpees. If you were going to get 110 burpees, knew you were going to repeat it, so the first one you went nice and easy, which pissed me off too. Like, don't go nice and easy on your first one planning on a repeat. Just don't plan on a repeat. The repeats are the worst thing about the open. So I said anxiety stems everything, but the repeats were just deadly. I hated it. Good thing about the Open, it starts up the season. Baseball has spring training, the NFL has preseason, and CrossFit has the CrossFit Open. So when pitchers and catchers report to baseball, everyone who's got a baseball mind goes, okay, cool. We know that the season's starting up in a minute. It's getting warm out. This is exciting. So with the CrossFit season, you know, the CrossFit games are over here, and it starts with the Open. The open which people get to participate in but you know that with the open comes what was regionals and is now like the semi-final thing the quarterfinals are now sprinkled in there and it's exciting thing to ramp up to the pinnacle which is the crossfit games everybody loves the crossfit games and if you do know some people who are on like the highway to getting to the games it's even cooler bad thing about the crossfit open is deviating from the program everyone everywhere should have some sort of progression that they're going on and as a programmer and the person who ran, operated, owner, player, coach of the gym where the program went through, I did fall victim to the fact that I would change up the program based on the CrossFit Open. It stems from Friday you don't know what you're going to do. And if Friday you don't know what you're going to do, you can guess, but you never really know. Thursday, you almost do nothing. Low impact. Don't do a bunch of pull-ups. Don't do a bunch of burpees. Don't do a bunch of bar cycling because when you run the workout on Friday, like every gym in the world does, where you don't want to compound movements and hurt people because you did 100 pull-ups on Thursday. Now you got to do 120 on Friday because that's what Dave Castro programmed. I don't know the way out of that. Maybe the open workout should be done on a Saturday or Sunday. It doesn't make sense logistically. I don't have a way around it. Thank God it's only three weeks now because when it was five weeks, every Thursday became an easy day. Almost you were getting in worse shape. You could do a Monday, Tuesday progression or something where you would build upon itself. <sighs> Wednesday would come around, you'd have to start taking it easy. And then Thursday would come around, you would really want to be careful with the movements that you were prescribing. Friday would come around, you were just doing the open workout. So if the open workout was something that wasn't very accessible, let's say it was one of those four minute windows with the cleans at the end, and then you didn't make the second window, people were not really getting the best workouts in. Not why I have a gym, had a gym. I had a gym because I want people to be in the best shape. Not really because I wanted to go through all of this anxiety and losing of fitness. And for five weeks, you can lose a lot of fitness. This is actually a point brought up by a member of mine, former member of mine. She goes, hey, can you talk about... It kind of ruins everything, the CrossFit Open. So where there is good, there is always bad. And yeah, it does ruin things and it does express your fitness. That doesn't mean that it can really build your fitness. Thing number four that's good about the CrossFit Open, and I kind of talked about the fact that it brings people together within the sphere that you're in, and it's something to look forward to, but it also brings people to the sport. A kick for people who are formerly athletic. It's a kick for people who are by nature competitive. And if it's something where you can put your name out there, 
it's something that you look forward to and you get a little drive and it's almost again like that new year's resolution so if ever you know that the open's coming up and it's just like that little thing that little carrot over there where you want to make sure that you're going to show up for it then it's a good thing so if the open will bring people into crossfit because there is that little competitive kick there and all year you're training for the open you know there are people who do that Maybe to some extent or degree that has waned, but I remember 2016, 2017, that was it. And it'd be six months out and you would have the people in the gym who just wanted to be in the best shape so that they could show it in the open. And those are my favorite types of people, the people who are driven to get better and better and better every day, just a little bit. Those were people who I also saw were at the exports. And when you're at export, you're just, you know, you're doing your thing. Maybe you'll be on the Stairmaster, the treadmill, you'll be doing bicep curls and bench press, and you're just kind of working towards nothing. But if you can pull and bring those people into the CrossFit sphere, because there is something to work towards, like the open, then you're bringing in the good. So point number four of the good was that it's bringing in the outside community. The CrossFit Open does and has done that. Bad thing number four is the cheating. The worst thing about the cheating is that, like, hey, Andrew, we're going to do 100 air squats. I'm like, all right, that 100 air squats took me three minutes. Now, if I go and do 100 quarter squats, I could get it done in two minutes. I'm cheating myself because if I want to do it again a year from now, it's me 257, and I really took off three seconds. But I'm thinking about that quarter squat, and I don't remember that I was quarter squatting. I just remember that I did it in two minutes. I don't remember the three minutes that I now PR'd my 100 air squats for. I remember it's like, wow, I'm 57 seconds slower. Holding yourself to a standard on this stuff is very important. And the standard of movement isn't really all that's important. I mean, it's very important because if you don't hold yourself to a standard, you've got no way to know if you're doing better or worse time after time. It becomes egregious at some point where people will say, I'm not going to do these reps. Or cheating becomes one of those things where people don't like to say what needs to be said. If I'm watching somebody do wall balls and they're not squatting to depth, I'm going to tell them squat to depth because I want everyone to get the most accurate representation of what's going on. Now, if your best friend is watching you squat to depth where your wife, girlfriend, whatever, they're going to go, nice job, keep going, yeah, huh? and then the, the husband's just like rammering out these quarter squat wall balls where he's missing the target half the time. And at the end of the day, everyone around him is getting pissed off. His score is inaccurate. He's got nothing to build upon, and no one's getting to do justice. There are the people who also will say, hey, go do 50 wall balls, and they do 40, and they move on. And I've had those people as well. Those people tend to not last very long because they're doing all this for the wrong reason. There's no like process. They just want the end result right there. And you see it immediately through the open workouts. But if they just cheat like that, they're out. Cut and dry. I mean, they're, they're not out like on the moment, but they do work their way out. Pretty quick, I'd say no more than like six to months to 12, they're gone. They're not long, long doing CrossFit because you're doing it for the wrong reasons. You're not going to last very long. And it happens, and it's one of the worst things about the CrossFit Open is it brings this aspect out in some people. The final good thing about the CrossFit Open is it's a true expression of yourself. What I mean by that is every day you go into the gym, you do your workout. Some people have a little bit more than others to put out every day. Some people have you know, not as much effort and energy, but when it comes to the CrossFit Open, you really do see what you are capable of. Let's say you're doing that burpee workout that I mentioned earlier in this video, and you're doing seven minutes of burpees. And if it was any given day of the year, and you said, hey, seven minutes of burpees, you might get 85. And that's a good number. There's nothing wrong with 85 burpees. Now, when the Open rolls around, you might get over 100 just because there is that little kick you know everyone in the world's doing it everyone around you is doing it maybe you have a friday night lights and everyone's yelling at you to do a little better and maybe you knew all of this was coming so you did sleep better you did eat well that week leading up to it and when you do all these things right it is a very cool thing that you will be, say oh holy shit i was capable of doing that many this whole time and it compounds and you'll do better and better and better because of that and it's just the competitive nature of people and it's the coolest thing about the open which is the expression that you can see of yourself and it's always super cool for myself to see as the coach and it's always cool to feel myself as the athlete and I, and I know i keep on saying that this is the worst and this is the best this one might actually be the worst because i call it high school bullshit. you go to high school right and there's the principal there's the deans there's the teachers and then there's like the students and then within the students, there's the seniors, and then there's the freshmen. 
you'll see this in the CrossFit Open where like the freshmen are, you know, just kind of wandering around and they're peeking their heads around. And then there's the seniors who, you know, can control the whole world. But then there's still the teachers who can get people in trouble. And then there's the principal. And I would consider myself as the owner of that gym. <laughs> really the runner of everything the principal and as I was the principal I would see the teachers just trying to keep order those were my coaches they were trying to keep order and then there were the seniors maybe they were the elite athletes maybe they were the longest tenured people maybe they were just those people who have a lot of charisma and they can get people to do what they want but I would call them the seniors and they'd be rolling around saying you do this you do that hey judge this judge that no that was a no rep fuck you and it was just a really weird thing where then there were the freshmen who would just want to come in. They want to do their workout. And when they were doing their workout, they were getting pushed aside like, this is my goddamn barbell. Get off my bar. Don't touch my chalk. This is my area. Turn that music on. The seniors ruined a lot of stuff for a lot of people. And there's different types of seniors. There's the good people. Like, you know, those people in high school or college or wherever where they were friendly. Everyone liked them. They were the homecoming king, queen, whatever, usually. But then there were also those dickheads who were like the captain of the football team. And the only reason they were there is because they were the best at what they did. And if they were the best at what they did or the most charismatic and got their way all the time, they could just sh shove everybody out of the way. And it caused like this horrible, dramatic thing with the the way that the gym was run. And there's only so much the principal can do. And, hey, you're expelled, which I did. Like, get the hell out of here. You're out of here. You're in detention. <laughs> You could do things like that and say, you got to come in on an off hour of the gym. Sorry, if you want this space, this barbell, this music, don't do it at 5 o'clock on Friday when everyone else is doing the workout. This isn't your time, but I want the atmosphere. I need people to watch me. Friday Night Lights, football, quarterback. Rah! It's like, well, if you want those things, you got to also be a good dude. If you have to, if you have to earn those things, you got to like want people to want to watch you, not just say, oh, I'm so good and like nobody wants to cheer for the dickhead goes for females too. Female dickhead, male dickhead. There are a lot of those people. High school bullshit, one of the worst things. So we got five good things. We got five bad things. I hope you get ready for the CrossFit Open, have a good time, and I hope you don't experience much of the bad and you experience a lot of the good. And Riller, bye.